Hello and welcome to the official highlights programme of the M Sport Return to Rally Stages. I'm Seb Scott, we're here at Dovenby Hall, home to M Sport, effectively the unofficial home of UK rallying. We're on the eve of the rally right now and rallying is coming back to Britain. I'm excited, I hope you're excited too. We're going to head inside now, speak to some familiar faces and find out just what's going on. I think that was our biggest concern was that the fact that when the lockdown started to ease and other sports were coming back, you know, Motorsport UK released a lot of regulations on how to get a lot of other forms of motorsport going, but rallying wasn't there. And uh, it was key for us to get that going again. That's why we got in contact with them and where this idea came from. Uh, and we wanted to get as many of our customers in all ranges of cars coming back in. So it's quite good, really, in some ways that I'm competing with the two wheel drive guys. Matt's competing with the four wheel drive cars. Um, Adrian and Reese are there as well, who are good benchmarks for anyone in four-wheel drive cars for WRC level drivers. Um, and Malcolm's using the Escort, so I think it's really good to, to have that. And you know, we want to ev every customer is important as each other to, to M Sport, and so inviting them all along to the event is is what we wanted to do. And and, it, and happily that they're coming. Hopefully, this yeah this signifies a, a return to rallying, and I think hopefully for, for the UK, it, it puts on a, you know, it shows how a rally can be run under these, uh, you know, these, these COVID times, really. I think Saturday will be quite emotional for me because to think that all the cars that's going to be competing, they've all actually been designed, produced, or sort of manufactured in, in this environment. So it'll be uh, quite a special moment for, for, for myself and obviously I think for a lot of the staff. Well, that was interesting. So we've heard about what's happening and who's going. Shall we go and find out what the stages are like? Grey stuff, but that hasn't wiped a smile off a single face here. So many people are looking forward to getting back in action. There's so much work that has gone on behind the scenes. Six weeks it took to put this rally on. 11 months of work in the space of six weeks. Let's find out from the people that actually made this rally happen. More than the usual challenge. I mean, when you're organising this type of event, normally you've got 10, 11 months to, to, to set things up. For this we've had six weeks so it's naturally put a lot of pressure on on people fortunately the the uh, the team are, are really keen on seeing the event go ahead and so they've they've had to put in that extra effort over such a very short length of time hopefully all goes well um and you know we can't wait to to hear the, the, the sound of cars getting back into stages even just hearing them moving about in the service area just now makes makes you think of what you've missed so we've not quite got a convoy of M Sport cars yet, but we've got a convoy. This is the recce convoy, everybody's waiting. It's not the greatest of weather, but we don't care because we're going, finally getting into some stages. Some of these boys haven't been on a recce this year yet. Absolutely great to see. And we've caught up with a few of them. It's good to get here now. Uh, stage is not good, so we're gonna be recce here now and see how it goes. It's the first Tommy's event I've done. Ever. Ever. Oh, awesome. Yeah. I do road rallies and I did one at rowing about a month ago, but it's the first forest rally I've done. Um, well, I've driven an car and, and it was the first event back, so it was a logical thing to do. Um, so it'll be nice to get back out on the stages. Just to get the wheels turning and getting people, you know, buying fuel from, from the fuel supplies and buying tyres from tyre supply, all those things keep people working. All of the competitors want to be out as much as possible, so it's quite good that Malcolm stepped up and... and organise this event with the, with the motor club to, to get the guys back in the cars. I mean, it's just all these cars are sat in workshops and doing nothing. They need to be out being used. Well, we see other sports have, have started back up, but everybody's had to make small adjustments. Rallying's exactly the same. We, we've had to make some adjustments, but we're starting now and we go on from here and I'm, I'm sure it will go on very, very successfully.
It's rally day now, and I'm not the only one here. To the right of me is a rally driver who we're going to have on stage. And it's John Armstrong, say hello. Hello, it's good to be here. Uh, the weather's looking a bit wet today, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Nice to be back in the stages. Nice to see so many R5 cars, WRC cars. It's absolutely unbelievable. So I'm really excited to see the action today. We've already been around chatting to a few crews. <laughs> Anything you can tell us already? I think everyone is a bit you know, concerned. They haven't been out in a long time. They don't have any confidence because they haven't got the seat time. They don't know what sort of grip they're going to get out there. It's uh, the first time for a lot of people in Greystoke. A lot of the Irish people have never been here before. Um, so. Yeah, it's going to take them the first couple of stages just to build their confidence, I think. And into the Greystoke Forest we go. M Sport return to rally stages are about to kick off, but first, we need to make sure the stages are clear. And that requires a zero car. We've got a treat for you. Yes, that is Malcolm Wilson. Yes, that is a Ford Escort Mark II. And he's going to be clearing the stage for us. Couldn't think of a more fitting way to return to British rallying on gravel stages than with Malcolm sending it, going sideways and having a bit of fun. Sitting beside him is Richard Christensen, is the chief engineer behind the Ford Fiesta R5 Mark II, which has already proved to be an incredibly competitive car. He's also a member of West Cumbria and Eden Valley Motor Club who have actually put on this event, so it's just the ultimate perfect combination of how to get rallying back going again as Malcolm's sideways there. A little bit rusty, should we say. Yeah, yeah but it must be amazing to be back out in the stages. And yeah, it's great to get here. back. Nice to... Special memories of this car as well. Yeah, no, it's nice to get back, uh, especially in this forest as well. A forest which must feel like home for Malcolm, flying in his Escort Mark II. Maybe living a bit of a dream there, we won't lie. And now Matthew Wilson, going in current WRC machinery, the Fiesta WRC. This car started life in 2017, won M Sport, its manufacturer's title, with Sebastian Ozier, Elvin Evans and Oik Tanak. And it is great to see Matt flying through here. And great for everybody to see some Fiestas flying in WRC trim. Something, unfortunately, we won't see on Rally GB this year. So M Sport have made it happen, which is absolutely fantastic. Matt isn't holding back, considering this event is mainly for fun. He is doing some testing, though. M Sport using every opportunity they can to further themselves in the World Rally Championship. Let's hear from Matt now. Ah, amazing fun, to be honest. Um... I think the last rally I did was 2017, so it's, it's been a long time, but um, I, to, me, to be honest, I got a bit of a, a lump in the throat driving out and seeing all the M Sport cars and, you know, what we've uh, what we've been able to put on with the support of all our amazing customers and stuff, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a good day, I think. It must be an emotional moment for Matt, seeing all these cars, but then, obviously... That's what we're here to do. We're here to get back rallying M Sport, probably producing the most rally cars that are fielded on club events. So let's get all the M Sport cars out. And we've even got some uh, factory WRC2 drivers by the likes of Adrian Formo here. Is no stranger to Greystoke, though. He actually had an outing earlier this year in the Malcolm Wilson rally, which he won. Fantastic to see Adrian uh, also dabbling with a bit of club events in the UK as well as on the world stage. It's really enjoyable to drive today, especially on Guavel. Yeah. Uh, it's a very really nice stage, honestly. We take a lot of enjoy it. So, yeah. let's see. I'm sure there's a huge smile underneath that mask of Adrian's. And now on to Reese Yates. An exciting character. He's also exciting behind the wheel, as we can see here. He's going to have a little bit of fun. James Morgan calling the notes for him. James had a little bit of driving fun, you could say, over lockdown, becoming EBRC uh, drivers, but well, co drivers champion as well. Um, Reese, no stranger to gravel, loves it. And uh, he was very much out there to have fun, but boy, he wasn't half having fun. He was actually keeping it up as well. As we can see there, properly exciting. This is what we wanted to see, and thankfully we've got it. So thank you very much, Mr. Yates, and Emsport well for fielding a couple of your uh, future stars of the WRC. <laughs> Maybe a little bit too much steer there from Reese, but... He enjoyed himself, I think. Let's find out from Reese. 
it was good fun, yeah. We're just loving it through that. We're overdriving way too much, but it's just good to be sliding it about again. So yeah, it was good, mate. Josh Moffat was up next in the 2014 Fiesta WRC. Josh, no stranger to gravel roads, although it has been a couple of years since he was last out on them. However, it all came to, a, to an end too early for an overall result for Josh. Engine problems, as you can hear from well, that not nice signing Fiesta WRC. He would be back later on to set some blisteringly fast times just to show his journey wasn't wasted. Up next, brother Sam Moffat in a Fiesta R5. Sam absolutely flying on stage one, just getting to grips with it, though, establishing himself on the... On, well, it, apparently the drivers were saying that the surface was quite um, grippy, even though by the looks of it on screen, it looked like an ice rink. Sam Moffat would take fifth overall on stage one. Fairly impressive for the Irishman, given it's been so long since he's been on gravel by his own admission. Yeah, it's, it's nearly two years since I was out in the forest, so I've no idea. Um, yeah, it was nice to be back out and everything feels good there, but we'll see what the times are like compared to the guys in front, but uh, it was enjoyable anyway. Up next was Hugh Hunter, and Hugh Hunter would actually go fourth overall and fastest of the non-factory entered cars. A really good time from Hugh as well, only one second off uh, French superstar Adrian Formo Hugh in the Mark 1 Fiesta R5, so a cracking time as you can see there, neatly done, tidy around all the corners and then straight on it, not car, not dancing everywhere. Cafe McCourt would get 6 overall, so the Irish contingent really showing their, uh, their hunger to get back out on the stages and, and really showing the English how it's done on the home turf, especially the M Sport boys. Kafan also only five seconds off Formo's best time. So, interestingly, the boys were straight on it, and uh, Kafan in a Mark II Fiesta R5. Really lovely, aggressive styling on the Fiesta R5 Mark II. I love this for the current generation R5 cars. We've got some really great examples. And then over to maybe not a classic just yet, but a brilliant car the Ford Focus RS WRC7, piloted by Frank Bird and Jack Morton on the note. He's actually level six with Catherine McCourt. And let's sit back and watch and listen to this impressive bit of machinery. Up next, Stephen Petch and Michael Wilkinson in 7th in the Fiesta WRC. All different types of Fiestas, from the R2s, the STs, the RSs of the 2014 to 16 generation, and of course, the absolute monster driven by Matt. But we're on board with Petch here, swinging it around. Nicely does it, taps the bank in, though he was lucky he got away with that one. A bit neater through there. Rear really skirting out on Stephen Petz there. And into the stage, Joseph McGonagall in the Fiesta Rally 2. The R5 Mark II recently renamed in line with the FIA's Rally Pyramid, which also complements uh, M Sport's ladder of opportunity. Joseph McGonagall posted the ninth fastest time. You know, the, the non-M Sport cars, you could say, really were in a nice little gaggle together. 21 seconds off the lead was fourth placed Hugh Hunter. But Joseph McGonagall in ninth, 28 seconds, all over uh, a 10 kilometre stage. Not much of a gap at all, giving us some nice competition for the rest of the day with five stages to go. Former junior WRC driver Tom Williams did get an outing in four-wheel drive machinery as he planned to step up. Uh, to the R5 category this year. Had an outing on the Cambrian, but this is second Forest outing this year so far. Getting used to, getting to grips with the R5 car, but got a, a really good, experienced pair of hands sat next to him, Jamie Edwards, on the notes. Really great to see Tom back on the British stages after a couple of years in the junior WRC. Quick check on the scoreboards then after stage one. 
with Matthew Wilson in the current World Rally Car leading the Rally 2 machines of Reese Yates and Adrian Formo. Hunter leads the non-M Sport exponents, ahead of Sam Moffat and Catherine McCourt. In the Rally 3 class we'll see more of later, Finley Retson led a gaggle of four cars by 14 seconds, while the tight Class 4 was headed by Robert Wilson in a top three split by just four seconds. Back to Matt Wilson now taking to the stage, bit of a blip there, stalling at the start of stage two. He would later go on to tell us a little bit of some small gremlins in the engine there, but still not stopping Matt from charging through to make sure he recouped his overall lead. Apparently Malcolm had a bit of a pep talk to him before this one. He said, you better win this. So Matt's first rally for a number of years as, as well. He's adopted his new and embraced it uh, to the full, his testing role with an M Sport. So as we've already mentioned, know these stages, knows this car in particular. This is M Sport's test car for the WRC. So Matt, this is Matt's office effectively. And uh, this is his office block in the Greystoke Forest. He uses a multitude of different stages throughout here. This complex, has, uh, has been designed and developed with Malcolm and Matt's input. They've even had input on how the roads have been built, adopting some Scandinavian techniques. Into stage two was Reese Yates getting his rear end out as much as possible, really giving everybody something to enjoy and appreciate for the first Forest Rally back of the year and probably the only one. Reese really enjoyed himself, even joking with James Morgan later on in the day that James was laughing as Reese was getting so close to some banks and bales. And uh, you can probably notice the old scuff and mark on his car as he did clip a few. Next up in the running order was Frank Bird, third overall in the stage, actually beating Frenchman Adrian Formo. Only one second shy of Reese Yates to an absolutely brilliant time from Frank Bird there on a six mile stage. He was only eight seconds down off Matt Wilson, who it has to be said is the favorite here, having been around these stages so many times. You can see in stage two, the loose surface was being pushed to one side, so as cars went off a little bit offline, it really would lose a lot of grip, but it does provide some phenomenal action and some nice shots there with Frank drifting wide. Good run through, nice and tidy, so a bit quicker than the last day, so keep chipping away. Next stop overall was Adrian Formo in his Fiesta Rally 2. Adrian using this day actually as a bit of a test day, changed his setup slightly from 1 to 2 and was happy with it despite actually going slower than Bird by 3 seconds. Sam Moffat claimed 5th overall on stage 2, setting a 6 minute 11, 15 seconds slower than Matt Wills. Finishing joint fifth overall on stage two was Charles Payne in the Ford Fiesta RS WRC. However, Payne's really good form in stage two would result in him jumping up three spots to end up eighth overall. Junior BRC driver Finley Retson stormed his start to the M Sport return to rally stages, taking victory on stage one and two in class three. By the end of stage two, Retson had actually amassed a lead of 14 seconds over BRC junior rival Eddie Lewis. Taking second in stage two was Eddie Lewis in M Sport's latest car, the Ford Fiesta Rally 4. Matthew Wilson wasn't the only Wilson to lead a class at the end of stage two though, as Rob Wilson ended up leading the class four category by nine seconds over Tony Simpson in the Fiesta R2 with that 1600 engine singing for all of Greystoke to hear. Tony Simpson would be second by the end of the first loop, taking third on stage one, clawing his way up to second in stage two.
Jeremy Packer was actually on his first ever rally for the M Sport Return to Rally stages. A long time partner of M Sport, Jeremy was finding his feet and this was the perfect opportunity to welcome one and all as rallying returned to Britain. From WRC cars right the way through to the likes of Mr Packer there, making his way round. We yeah. made it through the first one yes. without going off. That was the, that was the mission. Uh, if you need the door open, guys, great, because I'm for willing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the leaderboard for a picture of how things are playing out. Matthew Wilson leads by 20 seconds, despite that stage mode issue. Behind, Reese Yates and Adrian Formo are locked in a battle for Rally 2 honours, with Yates 11 seconds ahead of his rival. In the battle for the drivers not competing with M Sport, Frank Bird leads the way after that impressive run that beat Formo through Special Stage 2. I've had a couple of little dramas. We stalled on the boat on the start line both times. Uh, first one was fine, but the second one we we probably lost 10 seconds or so. It wouldn't fire up. So other than that, it's been uh, been all good, good fun, and um, managing to stay mostly dry. I think we've had the wipers on a couple of times, but nothing too serious. So and everybody's seeming to be uh, coping all right. It was a hell of a sight driving back up after the first stage and seeing that just you know literally all MR5s in a, in a big row was uh, was fairly impressive to see. So so far so good. Yeah, happy, yeah. I mean, weather's not great, but... And I forgot how to put it into launch mode on stage one, but other than that, yeah, we're having having a bit of fun, and, yeah, it's stages are... There's a lot more grip than I thought they were going to be. You know, on the recce and stuff, it looked dead like slushy, but first stage, kind of just... Yeah, just having a, having a laugh, sliding it about, overdriving the car, but that's just way, you know, lots of fun, so that's the main reason we're here. Yeah, to be honest, I wasn't really expecting it. Um, I've not really driven the car since the last stage of the Cambrian at the start of the year, so... Uh, it was just really ease ourselves in, but we came away with a good lead in the first stage, so just keep going as we are, I think. Yeah, it's been going all right, actually. Uh, stage one was a bit slow off the mark, but uh, it turned out it wasn't, actually. But we had a few interesting moments in some braking sections, so we sorted them out for this last stage. And we went OK, but I knew I had a bit more left, so we're going to come into this next two, you know, just holding this pace, and we'll see how we do for the rest of the day. So the first two stages have been completed here at the M Sport Return to Stages Rally. We're on the stop line of stage number three, waiting for Malcolm Wilson to come through as the zero car. This used to be the start line for the first two stages, and you can see the ruts that have formed on the road. And this is the ruts that the cars need to stick into uh, for the rest of the, the rally. There's going to be ruts like this all over the stage, and they need to hook their tires into that so they don't slip outside that and fall off the road. Absolutely great advice and insight from our resident driver, John Armstrong there, who is definitely no slouch behind the wheel. A bit like this man, Malcolm Wilson, making sure the stages are clear for us. Let's just listen to that baby sing. Unfortunately, on the second loop, Malcolm would end up putting it off the road and it was not possible to recover the car. However, both him and R Richard Christensen were able to walk away safely, just highlighting how treacherous the conditions were facing everybody as they returned to rallying. Matt Wilson off to a flyer yet again, even knocking down our GoPro there at the start line. Nice bit of onboard here, watching how Matt works the wheel. It's just effortlessly keeping the car gliding around, but then in a straight line, not easy at all. And you can see Stuart Loudon waxing lyrical there, beating out every note, flicking the page, making sure Matt knows exactly where he's going, despite him probably being able to drive these roads with his eyes closed. Slipping for a nice little chicane here. Some ruts forming as you can see there as John explained. Looks like we've got a bit of rain coming down now. Marshall getting a nice picture of the action there. And as you can see, being warned to slow down here. Approaching uh, the incident. Just seen Malcolm's uh, car tucked off to the bushes there. Almost stopping Matt just to check his father's all right. And then we'll find out what happened here. We got the red flag. Uh, just at the junction, sort of over halfway, and uh, yeah, he's he's off the buff fine, uh, but the car's in the ditch. So obviously, with the, with the been no zero car, think through the rest of it, we were given the red flag. So, but yeah, everything else is fine, and he's all right. He's 
Chesterfield man Reese Yates went into stage three, running second overall. However, he would lose one second to Josh Moffat and Adrian Fulmo on stage three. But notional times on stage four meant that Yates actually remained in second with a 10 second lead over teammate Adrian Fulmo. Frenchman Formo was able to edge one second over teammate Yates in identical Rally 2 machinery on stage 3. Stage 4, however, he had to slow down after seeing the red flag and going into road mode to make sure the stage was safe and obviously couldn't set a competitive time and was given a notional time. The same for Matt Wilson and Reese Yates. Looking to the customer entered cars now, Frank Bird ended up engaging in a frantic battle with Hugh Hunter. Hugh Hunter would actually post the fastest time out of the customers on stage three, narrowly edging Bird by two seconds. Bird would bounce back on stage four though to maintain his fourth position overall. Hunter and Dale Bowen were men charged on a mission as they were hunting down Frank Bird's Focus WRC to try and topple them and take fourth overall by the end of stage four. As mentioned, Hunter was actually able to take two seconds out of Bird on stage three, but by stage four, Bird bounced back, taking a whopping 10 seconds out of Hunter's stage four time. Good, yeah, just one quicker, so I'm happy really because we're not taking loads of that first stage time, so we're going okay on the first run, which is good. Yeah, Sam Moffat had a suspected puncture earlier during the day, however that puncture did actually arrive by stage 3, dropping a position to 6th overall after the third stage to Hugh Hunter. He was 7 seconds down, but was able to chip away at that time and close the gap to 5th by the end of stage 4. Uh, definitely have a puncture this time, front right's flat, gone. Yeah, we just hadn't, uh, didn't see it at all. There was a stone on the inside of the corner. I hadn't, I don't cut around, none, I don't. Catherine McCourt finished stage four joint seventh with Sam Moffat and Joe McGonagall, but was able to hold seventh overall by the end of stage four in classification, three seconds down off Moffat and a further four seconds down from Hunter. Charles Payne would go on to finish joint 8th on stage 3 and then to make even better, joint 6th on stage 4 with 4 drivers in total sharing the 6th position, Payne would end up 8th overall in classification by the end of the second loop. Joe McGonagall was also one of the other 4 drivers to share 6th position on stage 4 with 2 Fiesta Rally 2s, 1 Fiesta RS WRC and a 4 Fiesta R5 2 litre all tying for sixth. And Tom Williams would finish joint tenth with Stephen Petch, only two seconds shy of the gaggle occupying sixth position on stage four. However, it would mean Tom would still occupy tenth overall in classification by the conclusion of the second loop. And despite being out of contention for overall honors, Josh Moffat posted the second fastest time on stage three. Riding on board with Finley Retson, the talented young Scott flat out in his Fiesta R2 T19. Retson would end the second loop with a 27 second lead over Elliot Payne, with Eddie Lewis losing one position to Elliot Payne to drop down to third. Yeah, I actually don't know how big a leap I've got, so I've got no idea, but uh, just keep going as I'm going, it's going good, so. I mean, that's one way to go rallying, not know your lead. It kind of makes sure you're not going to put it off and you're not going to get too excited either. Elliot Payne, however, managed to scrape together a good result on stage three, just one second off Retson, and by stage four, finished equal with him. Um, a little bit better, still a bit slippery. I seem to be a bit off pace this morning for some reason. Um, but yeah, we had a couple of moments, but we're getting there with it now. We've softened it all off, so yeah. Eddie Lewis rounded out the top three in his Ford Fiesta Rally 4 by the end of stage four. Only two seconds down from Payne though, as their battle would continue over second throughout stage five and six. Rob Wilson continued to push hard up front in class four, taking second position on stage three and stage four, but was still able to maintain his lead with seven seconds of second position by the end of it stage four. It wasn't brilliant, I, uh, I didn't feel like I was quite on the pace if I'm honest with you. I, uh, 
had a few little moments and it kind of shook my confidence a bit. Moments shaking Wilson's confidence meant Tony Simpson was the man of the hour for the second loop. Simpson taking stage victories on stage three and stage four to mean he closed down on Rob Wilson to just seven seconds. Uh, grip's really good. Uh, despite what we said first thing this morning, it's more gripping in what you think is really deceptive to be honest with you. You think it's like this and it's not. There's tons of grip in there if you fucking find it. Uh, but no, mega, mega, it's just great to be out. It was Andy Turner's first time out in the Ford Fiesta R2 built by M Sport. Finishing eighth on stage one, Turner had made great progress. By the end of stage three and four, he was actually posting podium position times and battling with this recognisable name, M Sport Ford World Rally Team Principal, Rich Milliner. Milliner was also becoming accustomed with his car, having a hairy moment there throughout the day as his times improved. I'm getting into it, enjoying it, still reasonable times, so that was a bit messy to be honest, but yeah, it was good fun. So after four stages, Wilson leads by 29 seconds over closest challenger, Reese Yates. Adrian Formo promised an attempt to close the 10 second gap to Reese, while Bird leads the battle of the non-works teams with a 12 second gap over Hugh Hunter. Hunter leads a narrow fight for fifth, which includes McCourt, Payne, McGonagall and Williams. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. It's good fun. So actually on EWRC we're actually leading, which is nice. Got a quick screenshot, but Matt Cruz the last one because yeah, they're an issue in the stage. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, it's it's been good. Like the stage three, the first time through, like I struggled a little bit to go back down the stage, like the other way. So the lines are a little bit different. So I struggle with a bit of rhythm through there. But the second pass were a lot better. That were, felt like best I'd driven to be fair. I'm just really enjoyed it. Uh, we are third. Uh, we are trying to to get to the second position, but uh, it's not it's not so easy. So let's see what happens for the rest of the the rally. But uh, we enjoy that. The most most important thing I would say. Well, time for a last blast around Greystoke for the second loop, stage five. You can see a bit more water's come down and there's a little bit of standing water there as we fly on board with Matt Wilson launching it into the forest. Incredible scenes here as we can see from the drone shots. Matt Wilson must be enjoying himself as well. There's nothing that beats a bit of competitive action and feeling as you're pounding around the stages. Despite being told you'd better win this thing by Father Malcolm, Matthew Wilson wasn't able to make the greatest of start on stage five, only finishing second overall. But it was business as usual on stage six as Wilson came back to take the stage victory by three seconds. Giddy as a kipper, Reese Yates would take fourth overall on stages five and six, thoroughly enjoying the conditions, although he did note how treacherous and bumpy and rough stage six had become after the constant different variety of cars that had gone round ripping up the stages. He would do enough to secure himself second overall. Frenchman Formo would be settled into more of a comfortable ribbon on five and six. Conditions on stage five and six were much more representative of the Malcolm Wilson rally that he won overall earlier in the year. Frank Bird in his elegant, focused WRC was a man on a mission for stages five and six. Taking fifth on stage five, Bird would end up taking second joint with Adrian Formo and stage six to end up taking the overall rally victory once M Sport had withdrawn its entries after a sporting gesture to ensure its customers ruled the day. Yeah, really, really happy. Yeah, going into this event, I didn't really have any expectations. I didn't really know where I'd finish, so finish more than well. Really happy with that. Flying through the stages on the last loop, Hugh Hunter was able to take eighth on stage five and then another ninth position on stage six. Enough to cement himself a second overall. Hunter was flying throughout the day and desperately tried to chase down Bird in the closing moments of the rally. Yeah, really good day, fantastic, fantastic. Cheers. Oh.
Hunter definitely needed to pull out all the stops to ensure he secured second overall though, as by the close of the rally, just three seconds separated second, third and fourth. Sam Moffat would end up taking third overall on the rally, just two seconds shy of Hugh Hunter's time. As you can see here, pushing all the way, maybe crossed a little bit too hard. Hey, look, it, it was good. Uh, four seconds off Hugh going into that one and McCorda's new tyres on there, he's only two behind us, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And yeah, it's great to get back out rallying now and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. And yeah, hopefully it runs up like this again. With Kaffa McCourt using some fresh rubber to try and snatch himself second overall on the rally, he would go off on an absolute flyer. Taking one second out of Hunter on stage five to end up finishing joint six with Joe McGonagall. And then take a further three seconds out of Hunter on stage six to finish sixth, but it wasn't enough. In the end, McCourt would finish fourth overall. I oh, enjoyed it, it was good. That's good, that's good, a good battle at the end there too. I know, it keeps the whole thing and momentum going. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I enjoyed it, good hey. Good stuff. See Charlie Payne was locked in a battle for fifth overall come M Sports withdrawal. It meant that he would have to edge out Joe McGonagall in order to finish fifth overall and did so with just two seconds between McGonagall and Payne. McGonagall had the upper hand after stage five, one second ahead of Payne. However, on stage six, McGonagall would lose three seconds to finish 10th on the stage and drop down to sixth position overall, with Charles Payne taking fifth in two seconds. British youngster and godson to World Rally champion Richard Burns, Tom Williams would have an enjoyable day out come stage end on stage six, finishing seventh overall and having a clean run, improving throughout the day. A string of top 10 results in his Fiesta RS WRC meant that Stephen Petch would finish 8th overall by stage 6 after M Sports withdrawal. It was a great showing for Petch and it was great to see the Fiesta RS WRC back in its native habitat. Robbie Young was locked in a battle for 9th overall with Tom Preston. Edging out Preston by one second by the end of the rally, Rory Young took ninth overall with co-driver Alan Calvers. Thomas Preston had to settle for 10th in his Fiesta RS WRC. The M Sport return to rally stages proved eventful as well for Kenny McKinstry here. Oh, just nicking a banking there, sending his Fiesta R5 flying in the air. Nasty shunt there from McKinstry, he managed to get the car going again and underlining the strength of the M Sport built Fiesta R5 was able to return to the stage and carry on. Albeit, albeit hobbling home with his pride hurt a little and then leaving a little bit of bodywork on the stage for some marshals there. And now let's turn our attention to the battle that was for the Class 3 overalls with young Scotsman Fiddley Retson really stealing the show and led the rally from the word go, absolutely flying through the wet and soaked Greystoke stages. Retson was flying and on form throughout the rally, winning every stage he hit and ended up winning by 35 seconds over Elliot Payne. Yeah, delighted. Um, first win this season and only the second rally, so no, it was good. Um, yeah, not really much to report, just, just enjoyed myself and uh, the results seemed to come. An overjoyed Bretson did not mean a disappointed Elliot Payne, who had actually managed to close the gap in terms of stage deficit by the end of stage six, dropping only three seconds to Retson and drew level with him on stage four. The day didn't go according to plan for Eddie Lewis though, the junior BRC driver ended up having a massive incident here, almost going head on into a banking. A really hard impact for the junior driver there, but both co-driver and driver were okay after the incident. Finishing off his day on his first ever rally, Jeremy Packer was getting more and more confident and accustomed to his Fiesta R2T 2019 and even managed to spot a doe flying through the stages. Rob Wilson was able to make a commanding finish to the rally, taking victory on stage 5 and 6 to end up winning the rally by 22 seconds over Tony Simpson.
to be here, thanks to everyone that put this event on, it means just everything to come first in class. And thanks to the sponsors, Ravenol, Spout, Asni, they've, they've helped out massively. And uh, to be honest, we couldn't have done it without them. So a huge thanks to everyone involved, but massively happy about this one, yeah. An elated Wilson there, but it was by no means an unhappy Tony Simpson either, who had performed incredibly well throughout the rally, taking a pair of stage victories in three and four bringing it home in second on stages five and six to not second in class four, 22 seconds behind Robert Wilson, but more impressively, over a minute and 30 seconds ahead of third. In third position was one of the headline acts, surprisingly, for the M Sport return to rally stages. Rich Milliner, M Sport Ford World Rally Team principal, decided to go rallying again after not the greatest of outings last time in the Greystoke Forest. It was a full M Sport team effort as well, as Rich's co-driver was none other than Kirsten Dallas, his colleague at M Sport, who according to Milliner was the only co-driver available. Despite Milliner's teasing, Dallas managed to get the job done, guiding Milliner home to a podium position on effectively his home rally. As we run down the leaderboard for the last time, it's Frank Bird installed at the top of Class 1. Second and third in class, it's long-term BTRDA rivals Charlie Payne and Stephen Petch ahead of Tom Preston and Martin Cairns. Hugh Hunter gets the Class 2 win for R5 cars, heading Sam Moffat and Catherine McCourt after that epic last stage duel. Finley Retson dominated Class 3 as Jeremy Packer scored a class podium on the last stage, following Eddie Lewis's crash. And in the yo-yo Class 4, Rob Wilson romped clear of Tony Simpson late on, with Rich Milner rounding out the podium. wanted everybody to try and be as safe as it could be and have a good day's fun and to be honest that's what uh, appears to be the case. The feedback that I'm getting is it's been, been great so as long as people are going away happy that's the most important thing. That's it from us here in Greystoke. There's been frills, there's been spills but most of all we're back rallying. Thank you for watching. See you soon. <laughs>